stumped about something related to social media for your school, would you like to ask your questions in a safe environment with like people who understand? I love that you listen to this podcast each week and boy, we meet some great people, but sometimes it's just nice to be able to actually talk to one another and get your questions answered. So I am hosting a free live Q&A event on Thursday, December 14th. You can sign up now. You'll be able to participate live. You also will get the recording if you can't join live. Now, I really want you to try and join live, but I know it's there's a lot going on. Um, December 14th, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific. That's when it's happening. It's happening right on Zoom. You get to put in your questions ahead of time. Also, we'll be taking questions as we go. It's going to be a great time to bond and look into 2024 and see what we should be doing with threads and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook and all the things school related. You don't want to miss it. Sign up now on my website, socialschoolforedu.com. You can also sign up in the show notes. There is a direct link there. When you go to my website, it's actually right at the top. There's a little red bar up there and you can get signed up today. Now, I am super excited. You're going to love this episode. Caitlin Brown, she is um, a digital, let me get exactly what she is. Um, <laughs> isn't this good that I uh, say, you know, give a little pause. She's the digital communications and marketing coordinator at Liberty Public Schools in Missouri. Okay. She's been on the job for a year and a half. Um, she joined her uh, director, Dallas. He had been running social media for 13 years by himself in a district of 13,000 students. So now they have a two-person shop and Caitlin's focus is mainly social media. So she's the perfect person to talk about. Um, she's going to talk about how she gets content, how she has really grown the Instagram channel. She's actually uh, doubled the amount of posts that were done in the previous six years. She did it in one year. She's going to talk about what she shares on Instagram. You're really going to want to hear that. She's going to talk about how often she posts. And she's going to talk about how she was convinced that, hey, hashtags work. And she's got a great strategy for you. So you're going to want to listen in. But before all of that, we're going to get to today's K-12 PR tip. All right, today's K-12 PR tip. If you didn't know and are being frustrated by not being able to access all of the music options on Instagram for your Instagram reels or your Instagram stories, I'm going to tell you how to change it, okay? So um, as Caitlin's going to talk about, reels aren't a necessity for everybody, but if you want to dabble in Instagram reels and add some great music you need to go onto your profile on your phone and you need to go into the hamburger menu up top in those three lines and you're going to go into settings and privacy. From there, you're going to find a segment that says like for professionals and you're going to go into that and there's going to be a choice towards the bottom that says switch account type. Um, mine's already set up as a creator account. There's also personal accounts, business accounts. Sometimes it's called professional accounts. You want a creator account. That is going to be the magic key to unlock all of the music options for you that you can put with your reels and that's copyright free. So you don't have to worry about any of that. That is your tip for today. If you've got more questions, can't figure something out, you just message me. You can find me over on Twitter or X at Andrea Gribble, and you can email me Andrea at socialschoolforedu.com. Let's get started with today's interview with Caitlin. So nice to meet you. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, thank you for having me. Nice to meet you. Yes, Caitlin and I did not get to meet in person at Mosbra, but I got to meet your colleague and he had raving things to say about you. Um, and so I'm really excited to have you here on the podcast. Why don't you share a little bit, bit about your um, background and your role there at Liberty Public Schools? Yeah, so my I'm currently the digital communications and marketing coordinator at Liberty Public Schools, but my background is actually in TV news. 
and I went to Mizzou, the University of Missouri for journalism school, and then landed as a digital producer in a newsroom in Omaha for a year and then got home to Kansas City and spent three years at a station in Kansas City doing all of their digital work. Um, and it transitioned well into what I do now because I am a Liberty Public Schools grad and was thrilled to come back and um, kind of got to use the same skill set I already had to tell stories here. And I, I've been here about a year and a half and I love it. Okay. Awesome. I love, it's always a special connection when you have graduated from that, that school and now you get to be back and be part of it. Um, was your role a new role, um, like a second position at Liberty? Yeah. So, um, my boss, the director Dallas, he has done this run everything alone for like 13 years. And then they added my role and I was like oh my gosh how did you do this by yourself for so long um so now we're a two-person team and it's been really fun okay awesome that is great I'm so glad that he was able to get that approved how big is Liberty so Liberty itself is about 30,000 people but actually more than half our students live within Kansas City city limits we kind of run right into Kansas City Okay. Um, we have nearing 13,000 students in our district. Okay. Yeah. And that is a lot for one person. Yeah. <laughs> how, how many schools do you have? 19. 19 schools. How many high schools? Two and an alternative school. Two and an alternative. Okay. That, that helps. And that just helps for the listeners. Um, so how can explain to me, like once you got started, how does social media kind of fit into your role? And then you can maybe describe some of the other stuff beyond social media that you take care of as well. Yeah, so I kind of realized when like the biggest need that I ended up filling was social media uh-huh. um, because it's hard to be an admin and also do social media. And so that kind of became my specialty, which was great because um, I focused on converged media in my degree and that's what I did at the TV station. So it was Perfect. And so I do most of our social media planning and I have just a little bit more time on my hands to go out and about and be in buildings and see what's going on. And so um, it's kind of evolved that where I do a lot of it and on top of helping with like website and various internal things. Um, But yeah, most of what I do is social media and that's the way I like it. Okay. Well, perfect. You're on the right podcast, Mastering Social Media for Schools. <laughs> so what channels do you run, Caitlin? So our overall district um, accounts that we use, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a YouTube channel. We have a Threads account. Still not sure how to use that correctly. <laughs> I'm sure many people are in the same place. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody else. I, I when I talk to it about it at Mosbra, I'm just like, you know, when somebody's using it really well and effective, I'm gonna be the first to let you know. But until then, it's okay if you don't focus on that platform. So, right, cool. Um, all right. So you run those for the district: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And then, what about your schools? Do your schools have? their own social media accounts or how does that work? Every school has at least a Twitter and a Facebook. Some of them who are really ambitious have Instagram accounts. Um, It depends. We're working on kind of a consistency now that we have the manpower to kind of support that. It's actually something we're working on right now is rolling out a digital media team. So we kind of have a point person in each building that we can provide resources and who can push stories our way. Um, but the schools do do their own social media and it would be hard for the two of us to do 19 schools. So we're really grateful that we have some really social savvy people in our buildings. Yeah. And do you have access to all of those pages if, if there was an emergency or something like that, or are you, is that something you're working on? That is a work in progress. Um, As we're kind of assembling this team, our principals are the main people in each building who have access to those and have kind of been our point social media people okay. we're working on getting everything sort of tied together a little bit neater okay 
Yeah. And it's always a work in progress. Um, just so you know, um, you're relatively new to the world of school social media, but I was just on the phone this morning and they're like, they new accounts keep popping up. It's like, how do you control uh, the, the, the chaos that sometimes comes with social media, but you just do it one account and, you know, one connection at a time. So how do you get your content for the district pages? Do you go out and get all of the content by yourself? Do you follow some of their pages? Do you rely on anybody sending you content? How does that work? It's actually been a really solid mix. Okay. Um, and it's been easier. Now I'm in my second year here. I've built a lot more connections with people who be like, hey, this thing's going on. If you have time to come take photos, um, I'll produce photos and videos if I know what's going on. I also re rely pretty heavily on teachers tweeting photos and videos that I'm able to use. Um, and then every once in a while, we'll bring in a videographer that we have um, who can do a little bit more than I have time to do, and we'll use some of his content. But it's really just um, pretty organic, and okay. that's been really nice. Um, the videographer, is that some like an outside consultant that you bring in for certain projects? Yeah, he's just a freelance community member, a Liberty okay. grad, um, and he... Every once in a while, if we want something a little extra fancy, we bring him in. Yeah, that's awesome. So you recently received an award of excellence from MOSPRA for your district for the social media presence. So obviously, it was a good investment in the position and in you. So can you just tell me about that process, Um, you know, kind of what you shared and uh, kind of how excited you were when you won? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of fun because that was the first time... I had entered anything and Dallas said it had been a while since we'd enter anything as a district too. And I really didn't expect much to come of it, but was pleasantly surprised when I got the text message that we had a little certificate. And um, yeah, so the way the award worked is we submitted our social handles and there was a couple different weeks. The judges went back to look at for each district they looked at those weeks on their social media accounts. And I guess those were really good weeks for us. <laughs> okay. So you didn't have to submit certain things that you did on social media. You just submitted your whole account and then they took a look at it. And then they happened to just try to hone in to be fair, I guess, maybe, and just pick a couple weeks to look at all the schools, the same two weeks or something. Yeah. I think it was like two or three different weeks kind of spread out throughout the year. Okay. Awesome. That is great. Now your Instagram has really grown since you joined Liberty. So tell me a, a little bit about the strategies that you use for Instagram. Yeah. So that was a fun discovery I made when we were doing kind of our year in review department review is in the year since I've been here in this position has been created apparent like this is a good example of how the bandwidth of our team has increased is in the six years our social, our Instagram had existed, I ended up doubling what was posted from those six years in just one year, just because, you know, more boots on the ground kind of stuff. Um, I love to grab some simple photos of just kids doing things. If I need something to go on the grid, if someone's tweeting cute, you know, spirit day photos or cute you know, student with custodian kind of stuff, like the simple things I feel like do really well on Instagram. I do mix in some of our appreciation graphics and some of our student achievement graphics. I know not everybody is a big fan of graphics on Instagram, but ours tend to do pretty well, especially when they're about student achievement. So I do mix those in and it kind of took a while to get into stride, but I think we found kind of the sweet spot of what our audience really likes. Yeah. I, so I'm really glad you brought that up. I love that you say, you know, you, you share simple things and that you are sharing those graphics because in the training that Dallas was at, I was like, gosh, I really like, you know, kind of a cleaner grid without all the graphics. However, if it works for you and you're getting good engagement and you're getting more eyeballs on your content, then for sure, share it. And it's okay. It does not have to be the perfect grid. 
Um, and if any of you want to see the most imperfect grid ever, my social school for EDU page is totally imperfect. Um, mainly because, um, Caitlin, I don't have cute kids to take pictures of. It's mainly me giving tips and blogs and, you know, podcast episodes, but, um, I think it's really good to just know what works and what people want to see. Um, Facebook, we've got a lot of followers, Instagram, you've obviously grown, but I always tell people you don't always see every post on Facebook and you don't always see every post on Instagram. So it's okay to put them in both places. So I'm assuming those special like shout out graphics you're putting in both places. Most of the time, um, any graphic I make usually goes Facebook and Twitter both. Okay. And if it's something that I think is good enough to live on the grid, then it will also go to Instagram. Okay. And what size do you make those graphics? Do you only make one size or do you resize those for Twitter and for Facebook and for Instagram? Um, if I was really ambitious, I would resize them, but I tend to just use an Instagram square for all of them. I think it shows up well in the Twitter feed too. So, yes, I love that Caitlin. So everybody listening, cause you're even spending more time on social media than maybe some other people get to in their role. Amen to yes, you only have so many hours in the day. And I know Canva makes the magic resize and you, but even if you hit that magic resize, you still got to tweak it around a little bit. Right. And it all takes time. So using that square is perfect because it's going to work for all of them. Um, I love that. So, um, this is good. You sometimes, uh, you, if you're not watching the camera, Caitlin's kind of like a little bit uneasy when she says an answer. And I'm like, that is absolutely the truth that everybody wants to hear. Um, okay. So strategies, simple things, you've shared some graphics. Do you use Instagram stories? Um, no, not as much as I should. Okay. I try to, if people tag us in stories, reshare them. Okay. Shared posts were tagged in. Um, I don't know how consistent I could be with that because not every day am I in a building, you know? Right. So that's when I still, that's definitely an area where there could be some growth. Yeah. We found, and I don't know if you do this with stories, but we really found it a great place for those reminders. Like if somebody has a flyer or something like that, because you don't really want that living on your grid, but it just exists for 24 hours. Um, so that's kind of nice. Do you, um, have you jumped into Instagram reels at all? Um, only in the sense really that we, if I upload a video to Facebook, I'll tend to now check it to make it a reel on Instagram also. So that okay. it lives, if it's, you know, if it's a good quality one, we don't really, we haven't dabbled in the TikTok esque videos. Yeah. We have avoided that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's great for some of the high school clubs who have social media accounts. I think it's a lot harder when you're running a whole district account to be consistent and find things that are valuable yeah. to put in kind of that quippy short video format. Right. Um, yeah. And I love the fact that you're sharing. I mean, you've really grown uh, your Instagram following and your Instagram content without even having to dabble into that. So um, some of you are like really giving a cheer because you're like, okay, I don't have to do everything and you never have to do everything. Do you know um, how your fans grew? You said you're, you doubled the posts um, in one year compared to the previous six years. Did you, did, do you know how many, many much you grew by? Can I look up something? Yeah, like you can, you can totally look it up. Um. And I don't know if you know what your followers were before. I should have looked to see. What... I was thinking I maybe put it in our annual report. Okay. Awesome. I'm not sure. So I'm checking real quick. This is good. And it is good. I mean, just the fact of the content, but sometimes it's nice to know. And I don't, do you track reach at all on your Facebook or Instagram channels? Um, yes, I have that in a separate spreadsheet. I do keep track month to month. Okay. for our four main channels. Good. Um, follower growth, that kind of thing. So last year we gained 174 new Instagram followers. Okay. Awesome. It's an okay number, I think. Yeah. For one year. That is, that's really good. So what is your total followers now or what was it on that report? 
On that report, it was 3,500. Okay. Um, we're so now, about, we're over 3,600 now. So Okay. Awesome. Well, good job. Congratulations. Okay. Um, all right. So that's a little bit on Instagram. Um, and I do have to say we're, we're linking to all your social media channels in the show notes. Um, but I do really love, and I'm sure Dallas told you, um, in the most for presentation training that I did, I picked a couple of your just simple posts. Um, one of them was a really cute one with a boy with a little mullet and it was like, wow, it's October already, you know? Um, and then you did something else that was really cute. So that's where grabbing those, I mean, you just are grabbing great pictures that, you know, will do well on Instagram. It doesn't have to, it doesn't always have to be a novel or a big story, right? Right. I mean, I think our community, what they want to see is just what the kids are doing, that they're learning, that they're happy, that they're safe. Um, and it doesn't have to be that they're winning championships or, you know, solving the world's problems. They're just doing their day to day and they're smiling. Yeah, exactly. So what's your posting strategy on the district, let's say um, Facebook page? How many times, about how many times a day are you posting on Facebook? I try to minimum once a day. Okay. If there's more going on, that's great. I'll throw in a couple more on Facebook. Yep. Um, Twitter, how, you know. Oh yeah, go, go ahead. Go as hard as you want on Twitter since you know, sometimes the algorithm penalizes you on the meta platforms if you post too much too frequently. But right. I try to minimum once a day and then the really big wins, like throw them on there whenever they happen, you know? Yeah. And then how about Instagram? Um, Usually I try no more than once a day yeah. and I don't necessarily do every day. It's got to be something that's worth living on the grid, I think. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. And, um, you know, we found some success and this is just based on working with schools over the last 10 years, that is a little bit different than brands or a business that, Hey, if you have worthwhile stuff, it's okay to post more than once on Facebook, but definitely space it out. Don't post at nine o'clock and nine Oh five and nine ten. So we're always scheduling out to kind of reach out where, when you post once a day, do you just do it at random times or do you stick to a, a, a schedule? It sort of depends what the content is. If it's okay. something we're posting, like, you know, it's paraprofessional appreciation day or it's happy Thanksgiving or whatever. We'll I'll post that like seven or 8 AM when people are maybe wake checking social media in the car rider line or something. Yeah. If it's a reminder for like, Hey, conferences, I'll usually do it in like the evening when I know parents are probably on their social media otherwise it's kind of organic as it pops up um, okay all right that's perfect I love it um so you stated that having enough content is just sometimes tough for you and that you're trying to hit weekends so I wanted to pose the question because um years ago uh, we kind of started taking weekends off because we don't get as much engagement and I don't know if you get a lot of engagement on your weekends tell me about that um and we actually do decent on weekends if it's something people are interested in that's kind of where I started grabbing I think the examples you used at the conference was were weekend posts where I kind of went back through the week's worth of like photos teachers had shared online and grabbed some of the cutest ones and you know I feel like it was like you know when you're there was one I had posted once that was like when you wake up and realize you get school off like it's Monday and there's no school and it was like a girl really excited and it like blew up it was amazing because people are off on those days and if they see a cute picture they like it you know right yeah but Exactly. I can see the strategy to taking weekends off. Like we're not in school. Yeah. I just want to give you some, because one of the biggest reasons, Caitlin, is actually giving you a little bit of a break. I know you can schedule it, but you always have to be watching comments. Or did I make a typo or, you know, because somebody got snooty about something, you know? So that's that's one of the biggest reasons why we don't. But if you have content to share, um, you definitely can. Um, I just shared a blog just uh, just a few weeks ago on like those rules because there's like social media rules. 
but it's always okay to break those in in certain st- instances so um it's not it's not a hard and fast one but um i know consistency is obviously good um so i wanted to ask you a little bit about the share the good lps hashtag so you got hashtag share the good lps and that's helped you get even more stories from your staff so was that mm-hmm. something new that you implemented that was something that when i came on uh, Dallas kind of sat me down. I was like, here's these three main hashtags we use. And I was kind of in the mindset coming from news. I was like, hashtags, really? But oh my gosh, they work for our community. Like they do. And my favorite one being the share the good LPS. Um, our staff will share cute moments, to kids share cool things with the staff. It's a great way to just really pinpoint some of the wins in each of our buildings so that we can see them and share them and then we like to highlight um posts from that hashtag in our bi-weekly newsletter that goes out to our whole community we'll pick a few and then we'll highlight them in our quarterly magazine sometimes too so it's been a great way to kind of just amplify the simple sweet things and sometimes you know it's the student one state swimming or whatever but a lot of times it's just really cute little things that teachers catch that no one else would get that glimpse of something that small and sweet. So are most of those um, stories that you catch with that hashtag on Twitter? Most, yeah. For okay. the most part, I I love TweetDeck, X Pro, whatever we call it now. Okay. And keep a column for it. And we just, our staff is really active on Twitter, so Okay. So you are paying for the X pro so that you can watch some of those. We, yeah, we liked how it functioned and yeah, we're reluctant to give in and pay, but it is nice to have the check marks. People know it's us and to have that functionality of the different lists and hashtags all in one view. Yeah. And I love how you are um, sharing some of those, uh, you know, stories in your newsletter in your magazine (laughs) excuse me we're just gonna leave that sneeze (laughs) right in there um I I love how you're doing that because you're giving a shout out to the people that are giving you content and so it's like oh my gosh like she used my tweet or you know that was my post um so that's a really great way of kind of giving them a props and, and an applause don't you think yeah, and it's been great. The more we retweet those moments, the more they seem to appear. Yeah. And that's just, and it makes me smile. Like I like seeing them on the feed too. Yeah. So you, you'll retweet them. You sometimes use them in, in um, your newsletters, in your um, like publications. And then you said you also sometimes pull some of those over to Instagram or over to Facebook. Is that right? Yeah, I'll grab them and share them other places. And if it's something cool that's not like one and done and I see it could turn into like a story, we might want to do a video feature on. We'll grab ideas that way too. Okay, awesome. Well, you're doing a great job with branding and, you know, all of that on your pages as evident from your award. Um, So as we wrap up, what would you say is your best social media tip? I think kind of along the lines of what I've been saying is like, keep it simple. Sometimes simple is the easiest on you and is the best received. Um, Not everything has to be the fancy Canva graphic or an in-depth video feature. Sometimes they just, people want to see your kids smiling and having a good day and then see your staff being great staff. They want other kids are in good hands. Yeah. And I'm sure you do a good job of reviewing data. And if everybody would just take a time out and look back at how your posts are doing, you're going to see what's resonating and maybe what isn't and be able to better prioritize your time, um, which I think is 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 great. So you've gave, given a lot of simple tips, a lot of practical stuff today. I appreciate you hanging out with us, Caitlin. If uh, somebody listening would love to get connected to you what would be the best way? Um, my Twitter handle, Caitlin okay. B. News. My, feel free to message me or send me an email. Um, do you want that or do you yeah, want- Yeah, why don't show? you, we're going to have it in the show notes, but why don't you just say it just in case somebody's listening and wants to write it down? 
Sure. So Caitlin, K-A-T-E-L-Y-N, period Brown at LPS53.org. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Keep up the great work um, there in Liberty and uh, everybody else. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time with another great episode. Take care. Thanks, Caitlin. Thank you.